There we go. Okay. So I decided that, you know, instead of typing out another huge long email explaining another thing that you have to read again for the 17th time, I would just speak to you, right? We don't get as much interaction as we normally would, so this is nice to get to like see your lovely faces and talk. I love it. Um, so what lessons will look like during this school year? Um, currently, they will be online for the foreseeable future. And the big reason for that, because a lot of parents are asking kind of, you know, where that's coming from. Um, it's coming from the district directly, right? And the reasoning behind it. The reasoning behind it is essentially a private lesson teacher like myself, I really am in the medical terminology, a super spreader, right? I go across eight different campuses every day, right? So even if the chances are aren't high that I could spread anything, you know, just in general, I am the most likely to do that. And being as such, I'm probably going to be one of the last groups phased back into the actual like in person during school time activities, just because we're hard to control and we're not all the same schools. So regulating is is very tricky there. And they're they're doing it in phases and we will definitely be part of the last phase. So what that means, right past just the fact that it's happening is I'm planning for the whole year to be online. Like that is just my goal. I am planning for it to be online. Do I hold a secret little hope in my heart that everything is better and that like they let me come back and see the smiling faces of my kids? Of course, right? And that, that hope will always be there. But I'm a big plan for the worst and be pleasantly surprised when the world is better than you thought, right? And I, I'm just, you know, going to be prepared for that. And we have the wonders of technology and it's, it's going to work out just fine. Um, some schools are taking different approaches to how online lessons will work. Some, some schools are issuing Chromebooks um, and allowing kids to have them at home so that way they can um, have lessons at home more frequently if they don't have the technology. Um, allowing them to have their Chromebooks during their band period when they're back in person. So that way during their lesson time, they just go to a practice room, sign in on their Chromebook, I sign in, and we're having our lesson in the practice room. Um, some are doing it to where they're setting other special rooms aside. There's a large variety. So as we get into the school year and as I know more how each school is going to look exactly, I'll definitely be in communication with you guys. Or if you have questions once we get started, I'll start having more information and I can start answering. Oh yes, that's right. We don't have to schedule after school because, you know, Timmy has band class that I have free and he can go in the practice room and have his lesson. Um, and that's great. Some kids will be doing, um, after the three weeks, they'll be going back. Some will be doing virtual academy. For those students that are doing virtual academy, I will be prioritizing students that are in person to be during class times. The main reason is getting in and out of school is going to be taking much longer because of social distancing and how everything has to work. So after school lessons are much harder for the students during school hours that are actually physically at the school than the virtual academy students, right? The virtual academy student, they end 10 minutes after they can grab a snack and then log into their lesson and it's just an easy transition. Whereas a student coming from the school, there might be a much larger window and it's gonna be a much more variable window because of how much back traffic and everything going on. Um, so that's kind of where my decision along who I give priority to during school and after school to. Um, I often won't be doing before school lessons except for a last resort, um, just because I do live in an apartment complex and I can't play at certain hours of the day. And it's not fair to a student to not be able to demonstrate for them because of the hour of the day that I'm playing, right? Again, if it's an absolute must, like there's just no other way in the world we can do it, we'll make it happen. We'll, we'll do what we have to. Um, but just, you know, that is my last resort. Um, 
I will be doing um, weekend lessons, which normally I don't do during the school year because we have the school day. It's normal. Like everything is, you know, the way it's always been. Because it's not that way, I will be opening up slots during the weekend to accommodate the fact that we just might not be able to fit everyone into the week. They will be also kind of lower on priority. I will be trying to make stuff during the week happen as much as possible, make the school year feel regular. But as needed, we'll, we'll be working online from there. And of course, this will all be person by person um, as, as we need. I will try to make everyone as regular as possible, and then I'll be contacting you if it's just not quite fitting, and then we'll get it figured out. Um, and some of you have already experienced that with me as we've gone through this year. So reads and anything in person. So I will still be delivering reads. Um, I'm, I'm trying very hard to start next week. My machines are coming back in. Um, I, uh, how to put this delicately, uh, tripped with my box of my machines that I use to make reads. And so they had to go to the shop to get fixed. Um, so currently I, I only have a very limited supply that I'm kind of reserving for people who are like, I don't have a read. I can't physically play my instrument. Like, it's just not going to work. Um, so I do have a little bit there, still ready to go. Um, but if your students are still OK, at least for a week or two, then I'm going to, as soon as my machines get back, I'm going to be making a lot of reads and getting them out to people. Um, I'll usually do that about every two weeks. I'll be making a delivery. Some of you in the summer or at the end of the school year had that where I was, was just coming out. I emailed you ahead of time, let you know the window I'd be coming out and then I would drop off. Um, that will also be contactless. Um, it doesn't have to be, but if you choose that you would like to be contactless, all you have to do is let me know, and I will make it contactless. Uh, I'm very big on um, everyone's comfort level with that. The big issue in the private lesson community right now is what to do about parents who want in-person, at-home lessons every once in a while during this time. I am my own business. I am liable in several ways. And so my answer that I can give you right now is that I don't know how that's going to look or if I will be doing that just yet. Um, I have several phone calls over the next couple of weeks with some healthcare professionals to see how I would best handle that and see if it's even possible for me to be what is considered safe by professional healthcare standards when doing that. And as I know more about that, I will be sending that out to the parents. Um, anything in person is in absolutely no way required by any parent. You should feel no pressure in any way for that. If it's something that you do want, great, phenomenal, fantastic. If we can make it happen, we will make it happen. But do not feel that your student is behind or something's wrong or something's bad if that's just not at your comfort level. That's completely fine. We will be sure and have the same level of education either way. Um, as you many of you know, sometimes reads need adjusting in person. This is kind of along that line. So not only delivering reads, but also once they've been playing on them, adjusting them for them so that they play better. Like th this is kind of the whole thing involved with that. So. After the first three week online period, I will be um, opening back up middle school and high school studio class again. Um, we did that during the end of the year to kind of supplement playing opportunities for the students. Um, just because going back to school, they're gonna do their best to give them as many playing opportunities as possible, but obviously they can't give them every single one. Like it, it can't look exactly the same. So uh, I took it upon myself that I want to be sure that they do get the playing opportunities. Um, this is for everyone above sixth grade, right? So beginner parents, once they make it through sixth grade, um, if we continue with middle school and high school studio class in the following years, which I want to, it's been actually very helpful for the students, um, they will be able to participate in that. So what we'll be working on in middle school and high school studio is first and foremost, their audition and region music, things that they just need to perform frequently to feel comfortable and confident in their assessments. You know, it's not just about learning the music, it's about getting the repetitions of performing it. And that's, I feel, where studio class can give them a higher comfort level. 
so that they get used to that. Um, and we'll be working in a group. It'll be kind of like a group class on many of these pieces of music, and then also performance opportunities for the for the students. Um, these will always be online. Right now, that's how how it looks. And logistically, um, many of the teachers are just trying to figure out what they're going to look like during the school year. So I'm not going to be trying to ask about how we could possibly do studio class and lessons. That that is a once we get to normal, then we'll make it better than normal. Oh, one thing that I forgot to say about lessons that I want to be sure and mention. Um, for the first three weeks that are online, because everyone will be online for the first three weeks, the schedule is the most in flux um, because things could change online at the school, they could change in your personal. Um, there, there's just so much that can go on in flux. And, and same with my schedule. Everyone will be signing up online during the first three weeks. So I'll be creating way more lesson slots than I have students, right? There will always be enough lesson slots for every single student to have a lesson. You don't have to worry about that. But you will sign up online and they will be posted every Sunday before the upcoming week. So I'll know my schedule, you'll know your schedule and you can figure out what you need to do from there. Um, I am putting a 48 hour lock, meaning that once it's uh, 48 hours before, um, you won't be able to sign up. I'm trying to figure out how to get it to where it, on Monday it doesn't do that, but I currently I haven't figured that out. Um, that was an issue we had this last week. Um, I might just end up posting them earlier than, sat than Sunday, if at all possible, just so that if you do want a Monday lesson, you can sign up. If you want a lesson and you want to sign up for a time and it, the 48 hours have, it's, it's you know, closer than 48 hours out. That doesn't mean that you can't sign up. You just have to email me and tell me what time, the time that you see open that you want. And I'll put it in and email you back that you're at that time and that you can you see it online. That's just so that I don't get any surprises of five minutes before a lesson slot comes up. If I haven't deleted it, a student signs up and then there's a feel bad that I'm not there. It just allows me enough time to, to plan ahead and be sure that I'm in front of my computer actually when the student logs in. Okay, so next, one other thing that I've been working on, especially to, um, when I did my audi uh, not audition, my interview for Frisco ISD, one of the big things they talk about is um, enhance and enrich. So enhancing the student's experience if they feel like they're not mastering the topic so that they can master the topic and enriching students who feel like they've mastered the topic and need to go on to the next thing, right? They need to, to move on and experience the next level of growth. Studio class is part of one of the things that I do to help facilitate the enhance and enrich mentality. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be doing is I've actually created three YouTube channels, one for beginners, one for middle school, and one for high school. And what I'm going to be posting on each of these channels is um, warm up routines, play along with me, um, second part to duets that they can play. It's, it's to facilitate the biggest thing I can't do online, which is I can't play with them, which is like the most heartbreaking part, right? I can do with anything else. That's the one that like hits me in the gut is that I can't play side by side next to them and they can't learn through experiencing me playing with them. So I'm trying my best to create something similar. And that's what the YouTube play along channel is for. Um, now, some of your schools are doing um, similar things that I'm actually posting and doing for them, which is absolutely wonderful. This is that plus I'm going way more in depth into what we're doing. So like the beginner channel, their whole beginner book, just about about every line that they're going to be working on in class. I'm probably going to be playing along with them. Um, and obviously when it comes to an assessment, um, we will be taking the, the YouTube videos down, you know, a certain period of time before a major assessment so that the student has to work it on their own. That's kind of the deal striking with the band directors is just so that, you know, it really is an assessment. Like they do have to assess, but we're also not going to leave them out to dry. Right, we're going to make sure that they have something to play along to and can be just as prepared as if we were. So what I'm going to go ahead and do 
is I have the links to all channels. Um, and I chose this format because I was talking to one of my high school students and I was like, all right, if I say YouTube, do you know what to do? And they were like, yes, I do. I know all the things to do, like share and subscribe. And I was like, great. I'm glad that you know everything that you need to do YouTube wise if I just post on it. Um, so they can subscribe to the channel so they'll get notifications that are like, hey, Mr. Mo posted the next line in the book or the next part of the region etude or the next thing in line that's doing and they can go, oh, awesome, that's up. I can go play that now. Or, oh no, that's right, I forgot to work on that. I should go practice now. You know, however you want to think about it. So, let's make sure that it actually goes out. So here are the three links. They should be in your chat. Um, and I'll probably end up sending a reminder email at some point with the links in them, just additionally so everyone has them. But if you want to take them down, down from here and copy that, um, that would be wonderful. I know sometimes people when are on uh, iPads or phones, sometimes they can't see chat as clearly. Um, no worries, I'll be sending links out again. Or if you just want to email me saying you haven't gotten the links, I will send them out to you. That's no problem. So the last little thing, our last question that comes up is motivation practicing the, the, the eternal question of something that's not video games, Facebook, YouTube, that's instantly gratifying, right? The most important thing is the habit and cycle the student has through their practicing their and their achievement, right? positive practice and consistent practice leads them to doing well at the task they are given and given true positive feedback, right? Students know a mile away if you're sugarcoating it too much for them. You, you cannot fool them. They know. They're smart. They're bassoon kids. They're smart. They, they get it. So I find that it has to come from a genuine place of you did what you were supposed to do and you did it well and you should be proud that's where motivation sparks from the problem is there's a whole backlog of practicing routine effort that goes in before that part comes into play for the students so often when a student is having motivation issues it stems all the way back to a negative practicing cycle i don't practice so i'm bad so I get bad comments, so I feel bad, so I don't want to practice, so then it's worse, and it, 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 you know, just circle the drain. And it's really hard to dig out of. So a question that I get from parents often is, what can I do? Like, I love music, I know my kid loves music, they're in band, they're doing these things, how can I help them? Like, what can I do to help them? And, you know, my, uh, my undergraduate degree is actually in uh, music education. It's not actually in bassoon. I have my two terminal degrees in bassoon, but my first degree, I wanted to be a band director originally. Um, but I decided like working one-on-one -on -one with students far more. It, the best thing that you can do is help them with their routine, right? And help, and help just be that guiding force of, okay, before dinner, you're going to practice, right? Just 30 minutes, set your timer. And I tell my students all the time, and uh, they may not remember, but I do tell them in their lessons this, to take their phone and set a 30 minute timer and start playing and don't worry about anything else until the timer goes off, right? You're just playing, you're doing anything. But the second that timer goes off, you're done. You put it away, not one more, not one extra, not anything like that. You go on to your life and you do the next thing you need to do. And I, I make it very black and white for them. So that way it's not a trying to binge practice, right? Doing three hours on a Saturday to try to catch up for the whole week because they're not gonna retain most of what they do on that Saturday. It's just not gonna happen ever. Um, they'll retain 10, 15% of it. And that's, that's the worst part of motivation is because that means they worked hard and they got almost nothing out of it. 
that's the feel bad. That's where I lose a lot of students with motivation is when they start binge practicing because they're still putting in the effort, but they're seeing none of the results or very little of the results. And so I tell them, you have to get on less amount of time each practice and more frequently because you're going to retain more and you're going to feel better about yourself. And that's the ultimate goal. I don't care if my students are the top number one in the district, perfect, most amazing, you know, winning every competition. I care that they enjoy playing and they feel good about their playing and they feel they have a competent understanding of what they're doing. Like that's what's important to me. Um, so my answer to them obviously when they're like not quite as prepared is not, well, did you, did you practice more? It's how are you practicing? How much, like how the frequency, like spell out your practicing to me. Um, so that's a conversation to have with your students. If you feel that lack of motivation, energy, dark rain cloud, single thunderbolt over them, you know, and just, you know, kind of see what's going on there because that's often the crux of the issue. Um, I remember when I was younger and I had a same problem, my mom said, okay, I'm doing my gardening every day at six because that's in your home. Great, I'm gonna garden for 30 minutes and you're gonna practice. Until I come back in, you practice. And it was the single best thing for me, my seventh grade year. It's actually when I started getting really good at my instrument is when my mom was like, all right, I garden every day at six. You're practicing every day at six, here we go. We're just doing it. And then we'd have, then she cooked dinner, we'd have dinner. It was great. Um, before I open it up to questions, one more new thing that I'm going to try, um, and I'm going to try it for the three week online period, and then I'm going to see kind of, um, I'll be asking your guys feedback through email about how this has been working for you. And depending on how I feel, how the students feel, and how you feel, we might continue this or might not. Um, some of you have already experienced it actually. Um, I'm going to be posting notes to your My Music Staff account after your lesson, after your student's lesson, so that you and the student can see. So it's, it's you know, just a little, like, tiny blurb about a great lesson or a not quite the best lesson today, you know, just a little small feedback and then a reminder of what they should be doing. Um, they should still be writing down what they're doing or marking it in their book. Like, I don't want them to use it as a crutch. But if they're anything like me and have the attention span of a goldfish and can't remember what they had for breakfast, having it in another place that they can go look it up when they just can't read their script, you know, their chicken scratch hieroglyphics, they're like, okay, line, line, wave, line, dot. So is that a two, three or four? I don't know. They can go online and they can double check to make sure we're on the same page. And so you can have something to talk to them about, right? How many times have you talked to them about your playing and they're like, yeah, it's good. Okay, what are you doing? Playing a song. Uh, okay, great. You can now say, oh, how A2, how is A23 going? I know Mr. Mo assigned you A23 or A22. Um, you know, oh, did you practice your A major scale? You might not have a single clue what any of those words just meant, but you can at least use them. Right, to begin that conversation. And they're gonna be less like, uh, yeah, yeah I'm playing one song. And that, that's it. And move on. Because that's how I was with my parents. Like, unless my parents, like, specifically pointed to me and was like, how is this problem on my math page? They, they couldn't get me to tell them anything. Literally nothing. So, that's kind of the new things, just some questions and things that I wanted to get out to everyone. Um, so we're going to go ahead and transition into questions that you might have, anything that you might want. Oh, actually, sorry, one thing before we do do that, as I scroll down, actually, the last part of my notes. If you have not already responded to me, letting me know that um, you're playing bassoon again, your kid's playing bassoon again, and that they're taking lessons, even if you responded to, like, another survey somewhere else with your band directors, sometimes those get lost in translation. Um, you should have seen an email from me asking you to do that. If you could please send me an email just letting me know your intentions for the year. Um, so that way I can have an accurate list so that if I don't hear from you, I can go, okay, maybe they didn't get the email, I should follow up, right? Or, oh, hey, Mr. Mo, like, we're quitting band. You know, okay, great. I know not to barrage you with 700 emails, you know, talking about all these things when you're not involved anymore, okay? Awesome, everyone. So I'll go ahead and now transition into questions officially. 
and um, feel free to unmute yourself. And then if multiple people unmute, I'll just like call on people. Wow, I must have did a good job. I have a couple of questions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I saw your email about the camps and I was just wondering, are those camps different than like the vocal majority camps? Yes, yes. Um, uh, speaking about the beginner camps. I'm so sorry. I did see your email, but I just didn't get to it by the time we got to today. Um, they are the same camp. You are good to go. You should be trucking along with lessons just like you are. Okay. And then should they be entering their practice into the practice log on the website? Or do they don't need to do that? Oh, yes. No, I, I won't be doing that. Um, at least not for every single student. If a student does need to start entering their practice, I will be asking them to do that. Okay, because I'm the one that enters it, so I just want to know <laughs> on top of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's that's just it's a tool there just in case. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't get to say either. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Did you have another one? question? I do, but I'll let somebody else ask if they. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Did anyone else have uh, another question? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I, I I know it's probably a recap, but that's okay. These first three weeks, mm -hmm. you're gonna have lessons open up like all time, day and night, so we can figure out what the kids' schedules are because we're not gonna really know that until the 12th right um and then we can kind of fit them in do you want us to fit them in during that week during their band time if we can or do you want it to be after school and because they're going to be able to be doing this synchronous stuff right i i have no preference for the three weeks that we are all totally on oh, all of a sudden i can't hear you oh no okay uh, did mine go off can you hear me now Oh, it might just be you, Miss Orich. I'm sorry. I think everyone else can hear me. Um, I will send you a message. Um, I think everyone else can hear me. Um, so to answer her question as I'm typing it out, I'll type it out and then I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, so I have no preference. It's, it's what you need to do to fit within. Some schools do not want them during their band time when it's all online to do it, some do. Um, and, and some don't. So I, that's why I leave it so open. There we go. Um, it, you know, it just makes it easier for everyone else, right? Um, if, if that was what works for you during the band time, um, great. If not, great. I'll be opening up basically every time that I can do, and then I'll be removing them as they become unavailable. Okay, anyone else have a question? Um, as we're going through that, let's see. Um, I have a question just related to the band time and the scheduling. Yeah, absolutely. So I think I went in and booked Eric's lesson for this coming week. Yes, you I did. Sure I did? Okay, because I couldn't pull it up in the website, so I just wasn't sure if I actually hit send or not. So, okay. Yes, absolutely. And unfortunately, I wish it gave you, like, a notification that it did that. But if you go online and look, like, and, and reopen the calendar, it'll start showing up. Okay. okay. Um, and that's how you can check it. I know. I, it's the little bugs that I continuously send them emails about fixing that they don't. Um, but that's how you look at that. Awesome. Um, oh, Ms. Orich, I think you have it fixed. Awesome. Uh, so did my answer make sense for you? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, so I also have no preference in terms of that. It's just whatever you need to do to fit into your kid's schedule and what works best. Um, awesome. Ms. Bradshaw? It's my husband. 
Oh, sure. I don't know Give if you want to shot. share the. How you doing? You might want to share the. Uh, remember we talked about the bassoon stands. We're going to get one still, but uh, oh. in case anybody else is interested, because it might become handy for other families too. Oh my gosh! You know, it's like you have ESPN or something. Um, <laughs> uh, let me pull it up, and I will send the link in the chat. I think it's the K and M. Let me let me find it. Um, so one thing that I found to be good for for practicing is having a stand that they can have the bassoon assembled on, so they don't have to put the darn thing together. Right? If you ever seen your kid do it, it's you know it's a jigsaw puzzle in itself. It's it's a whole undertaking to put the thing together, and I find when a lot of students talk um, about oh, that's not the right one. As they, as they talk about what their biggest barrier to practicing is, often it's opening up the case and putting the bassoon together. You wouldn't believe how many students that's the answer I get. And so having a stand where they can A, either leave it together or B, put it together right when they get home and just have it on the stand so that when the time comes to practice, they can just do that. It's great. Um, I'm gonna send a link. Um, this is a great non-expensive stand that um, I personally have at home. I have a travel one that my students see me use. Um, but I do have a uh, like bulky at home one that just stays put together. Um, it's not light. It's not, you know, for traveling a bunch of places like around school. Um, but it is great for at home. It's brilliant. Um, it's not very expensive. And boy, is it Tonka tough. You could like literally run over this thing and I still think it would work. It's incredible. Thank you so much for that. That's great. Any other questions, concerns, comments, diatribes? Awesome. Well, thank you all. Oh, yeah, Ms. Friedman. Oh, sorry, you have to mute yourself real quick. There we okay. go. My iPad's being funky. Um, <laughs> That's okay. is, is there an app for the My Music staff? So the strange thing is there's an app, but it's an app that just opens in like Safari or Google Chrome on your laptop. Okay. Or, or, or not on your laptop, but on your phone. On so your phone. like okay. it, I... it's like a mobile site. It is optimized for mobile. So like it looks better in mobile, yeah. but, but it's not totally an app. So it works. It's great. I'm, I'm just looking for a place to kind of keep the web address someplace handy. Cause like sometimes when I log back in, it's, it's funky. Like right now I'm trying to log back in and it keeps taking me to the site to, to make my own page. And I'm like, no, that's not, but for <laughs> some reason it's not letting me log in again. So that's weird. Yeah. I don't know why I've never had that issue before. It, it's when I started using this company in the beginning, they were wonderful. It was fantastic. I loved it more than anything else in the world. For those who've been with me since I've been here, it was great. Um, this might be the last year that I'm with this website. Um, I don't know for sure. I've emailed them about a lot of things. I'm supposed to have several meetings with support because things like that are happening to a lot of people where it's not sending out invoices. It's not, um, if I click on everyone's name to send a mass email, it'll just leave off four emails randomly. Oh, wow. You know, like it's it's just small. It's never a huge glitch that like crashes everything and it's terrible, but it's just always something small. Or <laughs> yeah, or I'll see an I'll see an invoice that's for a different amount than what's on the account. Hmm. You know, just strange things like that that I can go in and I can correct and I can fix everything and make everything good. It's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. Um, so yes, to answer your question shortly, there is an app that takes you to the mobile site that does work better on, okay, on the phone. Okay, I'll try that then. Um, but okay. that, unfortunately, it's not an individual app, so. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Any last questions? All right. Hey, thank you all for being here so much. It's been awesome. I love seeing your faces. I don't get to see your face at like a concert like normal, which is uh, sad, but you know, we'll, we'll make it. Um, 
if you have any questions or anything else, please feel free to email me. Just a reminder, if you've not been in contact with me and not have given the like, yes, we are definitely in lessons, all of that, um, please give me, give me a shout um, so that I know. And I'm looking forward to another great year. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.